respected brothers and sisters in Islam. Today marks the middle of Ramadan, half of the month of mercy has already finished. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us amongst those whom He has freed from the fire of hell and has forgiven all their previous sins. Allahumma ameen. Indeed, Ramadan is the month of mercy. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is reported by Muslim on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. Ida kana Ramadan futtihat abuwaab al-Rahmah. When Ramadan starts, the gates of mercy are opened. Allah Azza wa Jal showers this ummah with his mercy during this month brings close those who are far enables the sinners and the disobedient to repent and the mercy of allah azza wa jal in the month of ramadan is manifested in different ways such as the ease of deciding when to start and when to finish. The time boundaries of the fasting each day. It is something that is facilitated to all types of people, young and old, males, females, those who live in the city and those who live in the countryside. Everybody knows that when the sun sets, we eat, and at the crack of dawn, we refrain, and we begin our fasting, and refrain from all other fires. Another is the health aspect of fasting. See, our organs function year long, and are exhausted. And comes Ramadan, they take a rest to regain their energy. As a matter of fact, for years, non-Muslims, and I'm not saying Muslims, non-Muslims have conducted researches and studies and proved that fasting prevents many diseases and it is a cure to certain diseases. One of the manifestations of the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal in fasting is that Allah Azza wa Jal made it a collective act of worship where all Muslims are obliged. They're compelled to fast together. See, worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal individually can become difficult, more challenging, easier for the shaitan to whisper. But when you are doing it as a member of a community, when the environment around you, when everybody around you, you turn around and everybody is fasting, people are praying, people are supplicating, people are mentioning Allah, people are reciting the Quran, it makes it easier. Ibn al Qayyim rahmatullahi alayhi said, worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal in a group is much easier and more facilitated than worshiping Allah alone. That's why, and this explains the increase of number of people in the congregational prayers during the month of Ramadan. And it's unfortunate that at the end of Ramadan things change. But the point here is that Ramadan is a month of mercy and Allah Azza wa facilitates matters in it. There is a uh, precious period in the 24 hours of the day and the night. It is that period that's immediately or directly before the crack of dawn, before Fajr. 
which is a sahar the time of sahar that period is usually a period when people are sleeping even those who pray fajr and even those who pray fajr in the masjid except for a selected group who wake up before fajr in order to pray qiyam and supplicate allah but throughout the year the majority of the ummah are sleeping during that period and it's a precious period it's the most honorable part of the day and night in the scale of allah but why because allah azza wa jalla comes closer to his slaves during that period in the books of al bukhari and muslim abu huraira radiyallahu anhu narrates that the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said allah the almighty descends to the lower the, to the lowest or the closest heaven during the last third of the night every night and says who is supplicating me i will honor his supplication who is asking of me i will grant him what he is asking who is seeking my forgiveness i will forgive him this is what makes this period so precious and significant and honorable during ramadan people wake up to eat the suhoor the pre-dawn meal in preparation for the following day they're going to fast and it becomes easier when you're up to ask allah you're already up you're not making an extra effort to wake up you're already up and many people of the ummah supplicate allah some, some of them might might pray two rak'ahs so it becomes more utilized and this is a great mercy from allah azza wa jal allah azza wa jal <coughs> in the Quran clearly stated that our mo- that our number one enemy the clear enemy as he described him subhanahu wa ta'ala innahu lakum aduwun mubin wadih he is for you a clear enemy allah azza wa jal out of his mercy during the month of ramadan protects us suffices us the defense against the devil allah azza wa jal weakens the ability of shaitan during the ramadan in the books of imam al bukhari and muslim on the authority of abu huraira the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when ramadan starts the devils are shackled they're chained the scholars said this does not mean that they completely stop whispering or else we would not see people not fasting for example but this means that their ability their influence their impact on the believers weakens to the minimum and some of the scholars gave an example he said if you chain a human being his mobility does not become zero he can still move around he can talk so he still has some tools to affect and influence but it is to the minimum and when we are surprised the whispers of the devil and it is weakened so much this by default help us helps us increase the level of our faith and approach allah azza wa jal more with acts of obedience and worship another manifestation of the mercy of allah azza wa jal is that repentance 
is made easy. It's facilitated. See, Allah Azza wa Jal legislated different acts of worship during the month of Ramadan. And the believer fluctuates and alternates between them. This makes the believer enjoy and taste the sweetness of faith. It touches his heart. It cleanses his heart. It purifies his soul. It results in tears. Tears of joy as well as tears of regret. Tears of joy that Allah Azza wa Jal enabled him to worship him and tears of regret for the shortcomings and sins he's committed before Ramadan. And this motivates him and encourages him and her to turn to Allah Azza wa Jal in repentance. It's facilitated. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrate, narrated as reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said when the month of Ramadan starts the gates of paradise are open meaning means of reaching paradise are facilitated and the gates of fire or hell are sealed, meaning that sinning becomes more difficult and it needs more effort for one to sin than usual. And in another narration, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَيُنَادِي مُنَادٍ And a call is made. يَا بَاغِيَ الْخَيْرِ أَقْبِلِ O oh, you who wants goodness and virtue, come forward. It's facilitated for you. Come forward. And O oh, you who wants evil and sin, refrain and stay behind. So Allah Azza wa facilitates repentance during Ramadan as mercy from him from him upon us subhanahu wa ta'ala the last point i would like to mention is that during this month allah azza wa jal legisl legislated for us means of forgiveness of everything absolutely Every single thing we've committed before Ramadan. Number one, fasting. من صام رمضان إيمانا واحتسابا غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه. This is in Bukhari and Muslim, narrated by Abu Hurairah. Who ever fasts Ramadan sincerely with faith and with the hope. That he will be rewarded by Allah, all his previous sins will be forgiven. Allah Azza wa Jal gave the same result for those who perform Qiyamul Layl, Man Qama Ramadan Iman and Wahdisada. Those who pray Taraweeh during the month of Ramadan, or even if you pray Qiyam on your own at the house or with your wife and children, you still are addressed by this narration. And then at the last period of Ramadan, these beautiful, precious days and nights, these last 10 nights of Ramadan, which one becomes speechless, he cannot describe them enough. There is a night during that period, Laylatul Qadr, which Allah Azza wa Jal grants the exact same reward for the one who prays it. Laylatul Qadr. Man qama Laylatul Qadr imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbih. He who prays the night of Al Qadr will have all his previous sins forgiven.
Brothers, the mercy of Allah is abundant and it's endless. It has no limits. Let us utilize it. Let's be deserving of it during the month of Ramadan. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to enable us and to make us amongst those who, takes up, who take opportunity and take up the chance when it comes and utilize it fully. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa alayhi wa Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين على الصادق الأمين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Talking is easy but putting words into action is what matters what counts is acting upon what we say and what we hear. See, we will not feel regret now. Do you know when we will feel it? On the day of Eid. For those of us who have live hearts, on the day of Eid, the entire month of Ramadan will pass in front of our eyes in a glance. And we then will say, Oh, I wish I would have done this and I would have done that and I've increased in this. We still have the time. We are still in Ramadan. We still half of the month far from it finishing. We need to be grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal that He prolonged our lives to reach Ramadan. Shouldn't we be practically grateful to this bounty of Allah Azza wa Jal? How many people wished they will reach Ramadan but now are buried? How many people plan things for Ramadan but on the 29th of the previous month they died? We need to be thankful. We need to be grateful that we're alive and are able to fast and worship Allah. We need to utilize the time. We need to take advantage of the opportunity. We need to supplicate Allah Azza wa to prolong our lives to the last 10 nights and to enable us to pray Laylatul Qadr. We need to think good of our Lord and that He will forgive us. Brothers and sisters, if we are not going to be forgiven during Ramadan, then when? If we are not going to be freed from the fire of hell in Ramadan, then when? If we are not going to repent in Ramadan, then when? The greatest loss one can incur is that Ramadan ends and he is not forgiven by Allah. Malik ibn al-Huwayrith narrates that the Prophet وسلم, once started ascending the minbar. And as he took the first step, he said, Ameen. Then he took the second step and said, Ameen. And then the day he took the third step and said, Ameen. And then sat down. So Malik said, we... The companions asked him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what were you saying Ameen for all these three times? Every step you took, you said Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. 
He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fidahu abi wa ummi. He said, Jibreel came to me and said, O oh Muhammad, may Allah humble him. He is an utter loser. He before whom your name is mentioned and he does not say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So I said, Ameen. And then he said, O oh Muhammad, may, be, may he be humbled. He is an utter loser. He whose parents reach an old age and he does not take them as a means to enter paradise by being beautiful to them. So I said, Ameen. And then he said, May he be humbled. He is indeed an utter loser. He who begins Ramadan and ends Ramadan and walks out of Ramadan not being forgiven. Oh Allah, forgive our sins. Allahumma ya Allah. Allahumma la taqata lana bi'adhabika fa la tu'adhna. Allahumma gfir lana wa rahamna wa tub alayna wa aafina wa aafu anna. Allahumma jalna min utaqaika min al-nar. يا الله رحمة من عندك تطهر بها قلوبنا وتغفر ذنوبنا أقم الصلاة